Hello children. Today we are going to discuss about HTML forms. And you might have seen such kind of a form earlier on some website or somewhere, right? Okay, let's begin. We have HTML forms which are used to collect some information from the user. Okay, you could ask for anything, you could ask for a name, okay, you could ask for a password or you can ask for a date of birth or something you can ask for a color or a number or your email or something right you can even let the user choose the male or female the gender you can ask them to select their game right or you can ask them to choose some browser or some other thing from a drop down list right you can give them a list like this in which you can ask them to select some single selection list or multiple selection list like so right or you can ask them to choose some car of their choice or something right if you have to write some paragraph or something then we can write a paragraph or some large text in a text area right you can even drag it like so okay so all these information you can ask from your user right now let's see what are the elements of this whatever you see here or here these are known as form elements okay or form controls Fine, let's start with the first one. This first type where this John is written, this thing is known as a text box. Okay, a text box. So how to write this? Here input tag is used to make all this. See, everywhere here we are using input, input, input. You can see all this, right? So input tag is the main tag in the forms section. Let us start with the first one. This is a label, children. If you have to write something like here, see here, first name, then you'll be using a label. Or if you don't like this, you can just write normal text also, first name. Only this much will do. Okay. You want to make it bold or italic or something, that's your choice. Let's start with the first one. Input type is equal to text. See here, input type is equal to text. When you write this, you will get a box like this. See, this box here. And if you want to write some value in this, then you can write value equal to John. Okay, you can see it written over here, right? Similarly, we have here last name. This is the same thing. You can write it in a label, or you can just write the last name. Okay, you can enclose it with a, a bold tag, or an italic, or underline, or so. Okay, fine. Here again, we use input. Input type is equal to text. You want to show something in that, you can write value equal to double. Okay, see here? So your last name is written in this. See this box over here, a rectangular box. This is a text box. And it comes because of this. Okay. Now, here we have a password. Now, a password field, you know that you don't like the user to see or let anyone see what is written in this, right? So, in order to do that, you can write in a label the password if this is this one okay you want to show a password field down so you have to write input type equal to password all right you want to write something there initialize it with value equal to do or something that's your choice you want to keep it blank you can just leave it blank save it and then run it you can see that this password is gone right similarly you can ask a user to choose some date of birth right you can even write to date or birth okay now let's save this and refresh this one see he's writing choose date of birth here choose date of birth now when you click here see it shows you a calendar so what you can do is you can choose your month and then you can choose your date and this 2020 you can just write like for example 1995 okay. then you can write manually okay otherwise you can choose it from here that is your choice yeah all these for example if you did let's say 2005 you can choose 2005 from here and then choose the month and then choose the day right that way also it is possible so it's up to you how to do it all right children this is choose date. So how do we get this? We write here input type is equal to date. Okay, we 
you'll get this calendar thing. Okay. Now it might be uh, passed from the user. You choose your favorite color. Choose your favorite color. Okay. And here we go. Choose your favorite color. Right? You can see it. Now you get this box like this. When you click on this, you are free to choose any combination of colors, right? And then you can decide between whether you want to keep it black or white or some light color, too dark or bar or something like this. Okay, you can do that. So this is you get that input type is equal to color. Here. Yeah. So everywhere we are using this input. See how many inputs we are using. Fine. So let's move on. Here he's saying choose your lucky number or something like you said, choose a number. So you want something like this, see how it behaves. One, two, three, four, okay. Negative also, zero also. So whatever you want, you can choose a number. So how to get that? See here. Input type is equal to number. Okay. Then you will get this. See these up and down arrows. You can decrease it or increase it, the number which you want to put it, okay. Then we have choose email and choose email is here, right? And you can get it by writing input type is equal to email. You want to write something in that? If you can write it with this value attribute, okay? Type attribute should be email, value attribute should be the or something, whatever, whichever you want, okay? If, if you don't want this, you can just remove it, all right? That's up to you. Fine. Now you can see very well that this is not a valid email, right? So we need some kind of a message which says that this is not a valid email. So we don't need to worry about that because it is automatically telling you. So you, what you do is keep your mouse pointer on top of that, and you can see. Please include that at the rate symbol in email address. The way the missing end at the rate symbol. So if you put it here, like so. Now the message disappears, right? Now it's fine. So it gives you a message also when you keep your mouse pointer on top of this control. But if it's correct, it's okay. All right. Then we move on further. We have this thing. You can see this slider here. This thing is called as a range. This. So you'll be writing input type is equal to range. With that, you can get this slider. Okay. And you can move it left to right. Okay, <clears throat> according to whatever the uh, range. All right, fine. Let's move on. Then uh, you can uh, just remember that sometimes you need to ask a file from a uh, user. Like you people were uploading the file for your uh, those object, uh, that subjective and that OTP is right. So choose file over there, attach file or something. So when you want that kind of a thing, you can <coughs> have an input type is equal to file. So you will get this with this. All right. And here the name of the file will be displayed on the right hand side where he's writing no file chosen, right? So what we do is we click on choose file. And when you click on that, you'll get this dialog box, open dialog. You can choose an image out of this and you can click on open and you can see AAA dot whatever the file name is there. Okay. Clear children? Then there might be condition that you might be asking uh, from few options and only one is applicable out of that. For example, you write a choose a gender and you can write a male or female here. Okay, out of that only one should be applicable. So whenever this kind of a scenario is there, what you need to do is you need to take your input type as a radio. So these round buttons, these are radios. And you can see this thing down here, swimming, okay, or the gardening or something. These things are known as check boxes. Okay, a check box. The check box is square in shape, and this radio button is round in shape, a circle kind of a shape. Okay. And the only difference between these two is that here in this main female radio buttons, only one can be selected. And in your checkbox, more than one can be selected. Okay. But now, 
uh, we need this behavior also we need to find check only one of the two okay we have to select only one of the two so whenever this kind of a case is there you have to take care of one thing when you write here input type is equal to radio for a male and input type is equal to radio for a female you need to keep the name as some common name for the two right see name is equal to g for gender right here also name is equal to g for gender now if i just change it like so g, g q or something and now when i refresh this page you can see i can select this as well as this so your functionality goes wrong here why because your names are different so you need to keep the same name over here right and then when you select it now it can select only one out of the two so how, how are you getting this functionality because you are keeping the name the same okay let's move on now there could be a requirement that you need to get the game where you can uh, make the user select more than one of the given options right so for example i like swimming i like music movies and cricket so i can choose this then later maybe i can change this to this this and this right so it's up to you so whenever you want that the user would select uh, you want to give an option of selecting more than one choice then you have to give type is equal to checkbox right so here more than one can be selected okay then there could be possibility that you want to give a functionality like this let's choose your favorite browser you can either click here or click on this arrow downward arrow okay and click on internet explorer or some other thing or this okay delete this again chrome delete this or some other one you want to select okay this functionality you can get it with a data list okay a data list data list is just a list okay and you have to give the options here like option value for the internet explorer you can see here that if i delete this i get these options internet explorer and firefox chrome Opera, and safari so here we go option value is equal to this option value to the chrome option value to the Opera, or something right so how are we getting these options in this it's because of this options tab right clear children let's move on now there could be a requirement that i'm having a list like so see here volvosa fiat audi and i want to get the option of selecting only one so if i select this then only one will be selected okay i can select here i can select here now why is this thing happening because this is a single selection list okay clear so how do we get that this is a select okay so whenever you write select and you write some option in this like same way we write in this uh, in data list here just we discussed now right so same is the case here option all right value equal to wall was up here body whatever so here it is then you can see here something called a size size means how many should be visible at a time you can see here in this list we can tell we are having four which are shown and here only three are shown that's happening because here we are having size is equal to three and here we are having size is equal to four got it okay fine now, now there could be a requirement that you can select more than one so i'm pressing control key from the keyboard and i'm selecting already from it you can see no effect is there you can still select only one why because this is a single selection list maybe you want to give them an option of selecting more than one so you can click on this volvo and you can press control key and click on here so more than one can be selected out of this why because this is a multiple selection list and if you take a note here there is nothing which differentiates the first from the second everything is same right but only difference is this multiple so when you write this multiple it becomes a multiple selection list okay and when you don't write a multiple here see this here no multiple is written right so that means this will become a single selection so only one word you have to write that is this multiple okay 
then it could be a requirement that we have to give the user an option of categorizing the various cars. For example, we have to make a category. Okay, for example, the first category is Maruti, second category is Audi. Right? So on these labels, you cannot select. Right? Take a look at repeating again. You have to make option groups. Now this is an option, okay? This we did earlier also. Here also options were there, here also options were there, right? But the thing is, I want to just categorize them. So I'll start with OPT group. See here, OPT group means option group. So there are two option groups here. You want to give a label of Maruti or label of Audi. And if you take a look at this side, I can scroll this. But I cannot click on Audi. See here, I cannot click on Audi. I'm trying to click, but I'm not able to click on Audi or Maruti, right? I can select only the options, this one or this one, right? So I can click on Wagonars and Gypsy or something and then in Audi also, I can, on Audi I cannot click, I can click on Audi A6, A5, 4, 3, whatever, okay, I can click on that. Then, let's move ahead. There could be a requirement of giving the user an option to type some large text. Okay, like for example, I'm writing this here. You can see this. We have got one vertical scroll bar here, right? So how are we getting this? It's because of this text area. Okay, we are giving a name message. We are saying that okay, we'll be doing ten rows and we'll be doing ten columns. Ten columns mean that from here to here there are ten columns, right? And the rows are ten. You can even count them from top to down. Okay, so that that gives you this one gives you the height and this holds that is the columns. This will give you the width of the text area, right? Okay. Now this is the message which we are giving in this. I have copied and pasted it here so that we get a vertical scroll bar, right? And if you don't like its size here, you can see these three buttons here. Yeah, sorry, three lines here. So this is a kind of a selection. You can select and drag it here or here. That's up to you. You can make it small or big, but the default size will be only this thing: rows 10 and rows 30, right? Then we move on down. You can see this rectangular area in which we make this first name and then this text box is there, last name and text box is there, right? This thing is known as a field set. Okay, so this is kind of a small form. This is a small form, okay? Form within a form, you can say. And we are having legend here legend is this thing which you are writing here see this personalia okay after that you are having label input label input this is label this is input this is label this is input okay fine so whenever you have to create a division like so you can make use of this field set okay this all right let's move on now we come to the buttons so this is one button like show message is a button right you want to show some message on click of this. So click here and you can see here it shows here this message hello world. Take a look at it again. Show message we get this hello world. Right? Okay. Then we have this see button type is equal to button. Alright, do remember button type is equal to button. You can even write input type is equal to button that is also fine. Okay. Then on click of that you want to displace a message, let me put it down on click is equal to alert. This should be in double quotes, children. See these double quotes here, right? Inside that, you write alert, and you can see this round bracket here, right? Inside the round bracket, because you already started with the double quotes, you have to keep a single quote inside, right? Double quotes. And within double quotes, a single quote inside, right? Don't put a double quote inside the double quote, all right? Fine, so this will be the method shown here, alert, hello world, yes, right? Okay, now it's quite possible that whatever you fill, you want it back to the original thing. Now, let's say that two or three people are filling this form, so one person's detail will be different from the others, right? So that's why after choosing all this, you want that you should reset. See the uh, functioning of this reset button? I click on reset and everything which is selected here will be going, okay? 
So value equal to reach. Okay, it will go back to the original thing. All right. So this is the reset value. This value equal to reset is whatever is written on this reset button. Similarly, this submit is what is written on this submit button. All right. Okay. 